Hi, and welcome to this uh, presentation on markups, markdowns, and break-even analysis. Um, this is picking up from where we left off in the previous video. This is part two. All right. um, in the, uh, before I get started, again, if you don't understand something, you know, pause, rewind, play it again several times, and if you still don't understand from reading the textbook or watching the video, feel free to contact an instructor, either via email or telephone. All right. In our last uh, part, we had talked about, the at the end, we had talked about markup based on cost and markup based on selling price. Um, we're going to talk about markup based on cost uh, right now and save the selling price for a little bit later. As we go through the market based on cost, it'll give you a little bit better understanding, we're like, kind of like laying the foundation for the market based on selling price because it's really all based the same thing basically the same thing it's just uh, how you know what information we're going to be using and when we're going to be using it okay all right all right uh, remember we're going to use the, the selling price is 100 cost is 60 and markup is 40 all right these are quantities dollar amounts and like i said that's going to be our standard that we're going to work with and you've already seen this you know you know how this works one thing I want to point out is that as we talk about percentages and things like that we're going to get into using decimals and when we're using decimals you know it can be carried out to many different places and depending upon the places you have what we like to call calculator rounding in other words you might end up with an answer of 9.996 okay but the answer presented is 10 Right, because it's rounded up. Right? Um, so just be aware that depending upon how you calculate on your calculator, um, if you get within that penny or two, you're good, you know, especially if you're applying the, the proper concept. Right? It doesn't have to be exactly uh, that number. Um, if you're on a test, you're picking the closest number. Okay? Um, also, too, as I go through this, I'm going to actually be working the numbers on a calculator. I don't have it set up. You know, in other words, I don't have, sure, I started out with 100, 60, and 40, and I made that up. Well, you know, I don't know the percentage and relationships. All right? I'm going to calculate them on the calculator in real time and present it you know, on the, the slides with you, okay, in the presentation. Okay, now, before I go any further, um, we're going to be talking about percentages here. Right? Now, when we look at this formula, all right, we're talking about dollar amounts, quantities, 100, 60, and 40. But there was a, a percentage relationship between those numbers and between the numbers and percentages. Right? And that's what gets a lot of students confused, I think. They understand everything in the perspective of numbers or dollar amounts. But as soon as they start talking about percentages, they get really confused. And then when they start talking about uh, percentages and dollars, because that's the way they receive the information, they just, you know, have no clue. Uh, they're just, they just don't get it. All right. So before I go any further, I want to give a simple example here, and to try to show you the relationship we're talking about here. Let's talk about a pizza, and let's say the pizza has ten slices in it. Okay. Well, that ten slices is the whole pizza. Right? So that represents 100%. Simple. Everybody understands that. Um, but now let's say, for example, that you look down and there's only six slices left. Okay? Well, that's a quantity. It could be a dollar amount, whatever. But the issue is, is what percentage of the pizza is still left? Right? We have to convert that quantity into a percent. And the way we do that is we take whatever we're looking at, in this case here, the slices that are still left, and we divide it by the whole, the whole amount, or all 10 slices. And that gives us a, de a decimal of 0.6. Now, to convert from a decimal to a percentage, we multiply by 100, and that gives us 60%. Okay. Basically, we're taking that and moving it two places, moving the decimal place two places to get 60%, or if you're just doing it on the calculator. Right? Um, but notice that there is that relationship. You know, we have 
10 slices plus, I'm sorry, is equal to 6 plus 6 not eaten plus how many were eaten. Well, if I know that when I'm looking at quantities, and we all know this very simple, that 10 is equal to 6 plus 4. We know that the eaten portion is 4. Um, but we have the same relationship with percentages. If I have 100% and I know that 60% were not eaten, that means 40% were eaten. Okay. Whenever I know two out of three, I can figure out the other, uh, the other one. Right? What if I was given the information that uh, I have ten slices, but four were eaten? Okay. Well, I would, and you know, I want to know what percentage. Well, four divided by the whole ten, one hundred percent, is equal to point four, and I multiply that by hundred, and that means forty percent. Okay. So depending upon the information that I'm being given, okay, you know, when it's written down in a word problem, I mean, if you're imagining in your mind a pizza pie, you can see ten pieces in the in a pizza, and you can see another pizza that has only six slices there, and you can envision that four were eaten. Okay. But if you're being given a word problem, right, you're not being given, or you're in the real world and people are giving you information, they're not giving it to you. Uh, that you can see it so easily in your mind's eye. Okay, um, you know, if I said, ah, here's a box of, of I don't know, ball bearings, and it was 372 in the box to begin with, and right now there's, you know, uh, I don't know, 126. Uh, you know, yeah, you can, you know, to me anyway, I see a box with ball bearings on my mind's eye. I see just ball bearings in a box. I don't, I can't envision 372. I can't envision 126. Okay, I can't envision how many were taken out. Okay, um, so depending upon the information I'm being given, I'm told that there's 126 still left in the box. Okay, or if I, you know, if I had said, ah, you know, uh, you know. John, go and, and you know count the ball bearings and let me know how many are missing. Well, he'd come back and he'd say, you know, there's whatever, 200 and something missing. Okay, um, I knew there was supposed to be 372. I'd have to, I'd be able to calculate how many were still there. So that's this relationship that we're talking about here: quantity versus percent. You're going to be given information. It's not necessarily going to be given to you in the uh, the way you want to see it, but it's up to you as a professional to be able to figure that information out, to figure out what you need in order to arrive at, uh, to solve your particular problem. Okay, so what does this have to do with our percent markup on cost? And so back to the pizza, you know, if you don't understand it, you know, that relationship, you know, view it again or telephone and speak with an instructor because that's important. We all walk into a store and we can envision buying that sweater, you know, at a hundred dollars and knowing that the cost was sixty, the markup is forty. But you know, what about those percentages? Okay. So percentage markup on cost. Now if we're told that our cost is sixty and our markup is forty, right, we can calculate our percent markup on cost, and you'll see why we need to f calculate this percent markup in the next slide. Okay, but to do that, we take our we know our dollar amount is 40, and our cost is 60. So 40 divided by 60 is 0.6666, and that's just going to go on and on. Okay. Um, that's a decimal, right? Point six 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 six, and if we multiply that by a hundred percent, we get—I'm sorry—by a hundred, we get sixty-six point six six percent. Instead of actually plugging in to the calculator, all I can do is just take this decimal place and move it over two, and end up with the same thing: sixty-six point six six. Okay. Um, 
for sake of ease, I'm not going to go 66.666 all the time. I'm just going to round it off to 66. But just be aware that when you have numbers like this in percentages, you end up in that calculator rounding where uh, I get 9.996, well, round it up to $10, all right? Uh, just be aware of that. But so we, talk, we, we know our percentage markup on cost here. Right? We want to know what that percentage markup on cost is. And to get that, we, know we have to be given the dollar markup and we have to be given the cost. Right? So yeah, we're not calculating a selling price here. And we're only using these two bits of information. But we're deriving a different bit of information. And it's the relationship between these two that gives us this percentage of markup on our cost. Okay? So, let's move on. Okay. Now, what if we know our markup is 40? And you know, we're being given the information. Our markup is $40. And our percent markup on cost is the 66 point six percent okay we can deduce our cost by just taking the 40 and dividing it by the percent markup 66 point six percent again to get to move from a percentage to a decimal we divide by a hundred or we move our decimal over two places so that would look like this 40 over 0.666 and that would give us uh, 40 divided by 0.666 and that would give us uh, our $60. Okay. Um, since we're, we've been using 100 and 60 and we're already kind of familiar with it, don't skip the step of actually doing this math. Okay. What if I had said it was 372 over 0.666. How much is that? Do the math. Okay. Um, you know, here we're trying to stick with easier numbers in order to convey the concepts. But when you're being, you know, when you're working it, you're not going to be given these easy numbers. So make sure you, you work it out here. All right. So here we're told uh, our dollar markup is 40, and our percent of markup on the cost is 66.6 percent. .6%. So now we're able to figure out that cost. Again, there's a relationship here. Right? Aside from the selling price, I was given a markup. I don't know what the cost is, but I was given this bit of information, the percent markup. Okay? And using that, we can actually calculate that cost. Okay? That's slightly different than this. See, this is dollar markup over the cost itself. Right? This is quantity over quantity to get the percentage. Here we're given the quantity, but we're given we're also given the, the percentage. Now obviously if I was given you know if I was given the information in order to calculate the percent markup, right? I would the, would have been given the cost. And there's no reason for me then to be able to calculate the cost. But again, in the real world, information is just going to be given to you. Right? And you're going to need to be able to fill out the rest of the information. Okay, so that's uh, the end of this part. Right? Um, next, we'll uh, be moving on to calculating our selling price, and I believe calculating our our cost and our selling price, and it'll all relate to this information that we've calculated here. We were working with a markup. We were working with cost, and we were we were working with a percent markup on cost. The percent markup on cost is kind of important. So, I'll see you in the next uh, video.